Welcome back, you eclectic noodlers, to another exciting, wonderful, fantastic adventure, whirlwind even adventure of Let's Play Baldur's Gate. On the flip side, the evil side, let's stroll right in to the cave itself down at the bottom of Nashgale Mines. Brought to you, of course, by the wonderful people at Please Insert CD, all two of us. Hope you're having a wonderful day, my friends. And get ready to enjoy whatever shenanigans we're gonna find ourselves in down the path of awesome. That guy wants to lead you down the path of righteousness. I'm gonna lead you down the path that rocks. Okay, enough of that. Alright, so we stroll into this cave here and run into Mullahay himself. Tazak must have dispatched you, and my traitorous kobolds let you pass, didn't they? I knew I could not trust them. On this such, you have obviously been sent to kill me. By Cyric, not a measure of our ore leaves these mines unspoiled, and I am still to be executed? I'll not lose my head over this. <clears throat> uh... You know, I can't remember which one of these we selected on the good side of things. Let's go with... No, I don't think we would say anything about being merciful. We'll just go, uh, yes, fool. Uh, Tazak is most displeased with thee. Reveal your treachery, and mayhap he will spare you. Tazak is unfair. I have no desire to cheat him or thee. My letters will show they are in that chest. Take them, take them, and Tazak will see. Sure, just call off your cobalt, will you? Go lightly. All right, so we all know the song and dance here. If we run over and check the letters in the chest, that will trigger the fight. The fight triggers about a gazillion either kobold skeletons and or both. The skeletons likely brought about because Mulhay is a cleric of sort, in spite of being a half ogre. A race not playable by the player, but hey, whatever. Or at least I don't... It wasn't playable in the original. They might have added half ogres in now. I think they did, now that I think about it. Regardless, we need to be prepped and ready for when this uh, group shuffles in here. Really, Thank God. Luther himself this should probably just be up front here, ready to intercept them all. There's going to be a whole horde of them. He himself, alone with his... Ugh, we still have splint mail, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Negative one will just have to suffice here. With his negative one AC, is there anything we can do to raise that AC? Ooh, I forgot we had Kagan! You know what? Kagan and Luther together. Luther would be able to do it on his own, but Kagan and Luther together will de- Okay. I was going to say, we'll definitely be able to do this, but I forgot Kagan's dexterity is not good. That 12 dexterity denying him the four bonus armor class that Luther himself has. And due to our enforced rules, we are not going to equip the gauntlets of dexterity until we have them identified. <sighs> You know, we could get Zan, couldn't we? Does Zan identify things? Who would we even get rid of? Oh, clearly we'd get rid of Rasad. Alright, so Rasad is possibly expendable in this fight. We'll have to uh, perhaps use him as a uh, a wall or a shield at some point. We will heal, heal Shartil on the off chance that she gets held in person, or held, hold personed. Uh, which is what Mullahay is going to open up with. He's going to open up with Hold Person. I think it might actually be the Rigid Thinking spell first, then into Hold Person, then probably Spirit Hammer. That seems to be par for the course for a lot of the enemy clerics that we end up fighting. Bless, probably a really good option to use here considering there's going to be a large number of weaker enemies i always am amused at the differences between the good playthroughs and the evil playthroughs i feel like we've had just a terrible time in the evil playthrough and yet we are an entire level up over a lot of well okay maybe not every character is one level up but brandwin being level four and having access to this many spells is already pretty cool no level threes but that's fine Okay, yeah, uh, we could try to have Branwyn cast Hold Person on Mullahay, although it's not very likely that that will succeed. He's probably a cleric, although his saving throws, who knows what they even are. Let's see, what is the... I know we're overanalyzing this a lot, but I feel like we really need to be prepared for this. So let's just take a moment to look at Hold Person. What is the saving throw on this? I would assume it's a save for a spell? 
Uh, spells, cast our fighter. Thus, a 10th level fighter could be charmed, but not an ogre. I believe that's untrue. I think ogres can be hold personed unless they fix that. Held creatures cannot. That's fine. It's. This is frustrating because it says. It says there's a saving throw. Saving throw negates, but it doesn't actually tell us what the saving throw is against. I would assume that it's just save versus spell. I would assume that any spell triggers a save versus spell effect. But then there's Petrification of Polymorph, which I believe certain spells will do that. Ow, oh, who cares? All right. The only reason I wanted to check what the save verse was is because I thought we could compare it to Branwyn. Branwyn is probably at least similarly leveled to Mullahay and is also a cleric with a spell saving throw of 14. I did my homework, guys. I figured out how saving throws work. Okay. So the way it works is let's say Branwyn's hit by something that requires a save verse spell. Now, she'll roll a die, and what she needs to do is roll above the number of uh, whatever her save versus spell is. So, right now it's 14. She would either need to roll a 4, or sorry, it needs to be equal or above. So, she would either need to roll a 14 or higher in order to successfully save versus the spell. Therefore, the lower your saving throws, the better. I don't know why. AD&D works like this. It's very confusing. Lower is often better, except when it's not. Like in the case of Thaco, where Thaco improvement is better, but it's not. And no, wait, no. The lower the Thaco, the better it is as well, isn't it? Gosh darn it. Everything is so confusing in AD&D. All right. Anyway, doesn't matter. So essentially, you could look at it that Branwyn has roughly a 30% chance to save her a spell. So Assuming that Malahe has a few more points lower in save versus spell, let's let's give him a 40% chance to save versus spell. So, we'll go ahead and cast Bless early because why not? It takes a long time to cast. Anyway, Edwin, he has nothing useful to cast preemptively and no one else is a spellcaster, so we'll just give, give uh, Branwyn a moment here. Okay, so there's our... There's our uh, bless spell. We'll go ahead and who wants to trigger this? Probably Edwin should check the chest. Fools, you'll never have the chance to take anything. Minions, come forth and kill the intruders. All right, so spawn minions. Luther and Kagan should be a-okay facing off against these weaker enemies. At this point, we will try to cast hold person on Mullahay. Edwin is going to throw out horror. Rasad is going to continue to be useless, and Chartiel will try to do her best with a bow. Okay, a nice, a good solid hit right off the bat. Hold person, oh no, that was horror. Horror only affects the biological unit of the kobold, the undead are unaffected by horror. Hold per, oh my goodness, well this fight just became insanely easy. And this is a good testament to kind of why AD&D, while a very, very fun system to play in is inherently kind of badly balanced. This singular hold person spell on Malahe is going to trivialize this entire fight. We now essentially can just pick off the weakling monsters bit by bit at our leisure. Uh, there's really no longer any danger in anything that's happening here. We'll go ahead and make sure the backline doesn't die, but assuming of course that we just dispatch the skeleton. In fact, we can just have uh, Luther probably needs to stay over here. He's kind of surrounded by guys. So is Kagan. Kagan's kind of surrounded. So unfortunately, they won't be able to come back and get the skeleton off the back line. But then again, Chartiel has that... Well, she had splint mail. She's sporting leather at the moment. But she probably has enough... Eh, armor class of four. It's not great. But she has at least prowess in fighting with melee weapons that she won't make the worst frontliner for the briefest of moments that we have her tanking here. Edwin will attempt to horrify this lone kobold, which is a bit of a waste of a horrification spell since there is the potential to hit so many more targets, but that's fine. Again, we're just continuing to thin out these weaker creatures up top. Chartiel and the rest of these guys will be able to dispatch the skeleton down below. And I would just let this run out because, again, this fight is no longer even remotely threatening. We'll go ahead and have Chartiel... Oh, well, let me say that and almost, uh... 
Chartiel almost bites the big one, but Magic Missile Spell will dispatch that skeleton. We're going to have Branwyn go ahead and chant up here. We'll have the backline focus on Mullahe, be able to pour in those free hits. In fact, we'll even have Luther focus on... Luther and Kagane. Kagan, is it Ka Kagan? Focus on Mullahe while he's frozen. Any target, paralyzed, stunned, held, anything like that, automatically you get successful hits against, and I believe, is it at max damage as well? Mullahe takes 10. It's 10 our max? What's the damage on a Bastard Sword? 2 to 8 plus... Plus three. That doesn't seem to be quite max, but regardless, free hits are free hits. Mullahay goes down. At this point, the chant spell really wasn't even needed. We're going to go ahead and heal Chartil just to avoid the most tragic of shenanigans that might happen. Lorlock's Mind Drain takes out one of the Wandering Kobolds. We'll go down here and hunt down the last one, which I think made its way into the corner here. No. Was that it? Wow. That was really it. Oh, nope. There he is, hopping around. Now it's over. Good gravy. That was one of the, frankly, one of the easiest fights we've ever had against Mullahe. Give yourselves a pat on the back, guys. Congratulations. We did it. That was uh, that was pretty good overall. All right, so we'll grab the necess necessary questy items that Mulhay drops and let the narrator take us home. the fears of the terrorized folk of Nashkem. But you remain uneasy. While the half-orc may indeed have caused the evils that befell the mine, the shortage of iron is too widespread to be his doing alone. His letters confirm your suspicions. Again, the ones we haven't read. No indication as to where his cohorts are hiding. They may have links to the bandits that currently plague the coast way. Those bandits, those mischievous rapscallions. Okay, just pick up some more of the loot that the kobolds dropped, and we'll move on down to the chest itself. Oh, we could read those letters we picked up. My servant Mullahay, I have sent you the kobolds and mineral poison that you require. Your task is to poison any iron ore that leaves these mines. Don't reveal your presence to the miners or you will find yourself swamped by soldiers from the Loki Omnian garrison. My superiors have recently hired on the services of the Black Talon mercenaries and the Chill. With these soldiers at my disposal, I should be able to destroy any iron caravans entering the region from the south and east. I don't want to deal with iron coming from the Nashgale mines, so don't fail in your duty. Signed, lovingly, Tazok. My servant Mullahay, your progress in disrupting the flow of iron does not go as well as it should. How stupid can you be to allow your kobolds to murder the miners? With your presence revealed, you should be wary of enemies sent to stop your operation. Their ta your task is a very simple one. If you continue to show that you can't do the job, you will be replaced. I will not send the kobolds you have requested, as I need all the troops I possess to stop the flow of iron into this region. With this message, I have sent more of the mineral poison that you require. If you have any problems, then send a message to my new contact in Baragost. His name is Transig, and he'll be staying at the Feld Posts Inn. Yeah, yeah. Your contact is going to be staying at the Feld Post Inn, eh? How very convenient. We happen to know a Feld Post Inn. Thank God. Okay, well, it's loot time. Looting, loot, 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 the giant chest. Okay, and apparently we're out of inventory space. Alright. All right. I don't want to talk. Okay, identification scroll. Fantastic! Fantastically unusable. But all scrolls will go to Edwin. Old Eddie. I get the feeling he'd not like that nickname. Properly writing spells in your spell book, Edwin does with his 85% chance. Suck it, Dinahair, and your 75% chance of always failing. Fails 100% of the time, 70% of the time. Yes, I know, I gave those statistics wrong. Crime! <laughs> we have so many unidentified items. Oh my gosh, I don't even want to do this. I don't want to do this. We have. We just need to find somebody to ID these st these things. Okay, so let's quickly loot... Uh, I mean, uh, take advantage of... Uh, I mean, uh, offload the gear that Rasad has. Does anyone else use... Surely, yeah. We've got sling users... Right, this was the party of sling users with three, count them, three party members who use bullets. That's fine, we'll just grab these. It's not that they're valuable, they're just a pain to remember to buy. 
And, uh, Rasad, I believe it's time we par part ways, my friend. In fact, I, I believe that, uh, well, uh, let's just kick him off the team for starters, but, uh... Go ahead and see As what his dialogue is. Wanes and disappears, so too does our association come to an end. I pray that it will one day wax again, and we should travel the realms side by side. Yeah. I shall return to Nashko, and if you ever wish to learn more about the Sunzo, please do not hesitate to come speak with me. Oh, buddy, you aren't returning anywhere. No, you don't understand. When you leave the party of Evil Luther, you leave the party of Evil Luther forever. No, 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 no. Where, where, where is he going? Hey, hey, come back here. Okay, we, well, well, we hit him. Man, thwarted. All right, that guy's on our death list. We're starting a death list, guys, and Rasad is at the top. I expected fully to just be able to kick him off and be able to oust him, but no. He made his way out, the <laughs> gosh darn pacifist. Me. All right, let's give a quick Who talk to Zan. The mighty strength of Luther, for I have languished in these dismal vaults too long. I thank you for my rescue, but I must leave quickly. I wish you well in your struggle, though it is surely lost. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Hold up, what happened here? What? what? He was gonna be our identification mage! Why did Zan leave? What? I didn't even know he had the option to leave! He's supposed to give you this dialogue about like... About like joining your team and how there's the sword in the chest. He just grabbed her chest and left. Or grabbed her... That is not what I meant. He, he grabbed the, the moon blade that we pulled out of the chest and just left. What? How many times have we been thwarted? How many times are we going to fail? Why must you fail us, game, in getting a wizard that can cast identification? This is driving Save me nuts. Hey, this is a trusting fellow. Okay. Well, we just kicked Rasad off, put him on our kill list, failed to kill him and the the guy who we thought we were going to hire to take his place decided to ghost us wonderful fantastic thank god <laughs> well we've got the show must go on we must press on uh we need to now secure our exit from the mines which is going to necessitate that we fight some creatures that require magic weapons to hit <sighs> and par for the course, the evil party is not equipped with any magical weapons. <laughs> well, the only other option we have at this point is just to fight them and hope that someone rolls a 20. Because I'm not really a fan of that, we're just going to bypass them. And by bypass them, I mean run past the slime screaming. Unless these are the slimes you don't need magic weapons to hit. Oh. No, these are totally slimes you don't need magic weapons to. In fact, they are slimes that we don't even need to be afraid of, apparently. I thought... I thought you needed plus ones to kill these guys. Alright, well. My apologies, my friends. Gray slimes... Sorry, gray oozes are something that no one should be afraid of, ever. Alright, daylight, but we're gonna go ahead and take a snooze. That's gonna get us our spells back, and we are going to attempt to confront a rather dangerous battle. I don't know what the chances of, of success are. This is, this is going to be one of the times where we use a quick save and we might need to fall back on it should we get a total party wipe. However, there is a group of assassins up here, Amazons or something like that, that have some pretty good armor. Not to mention just some kind of nifty gear all around. Apparently we don't have Rasad. he would be the perfect bait at this point. We're gonna really need to sort of plan this out, more so than the fight against Mullahaya. While it would be very nice to just hope for a lucky hold person spell, I don't really feel like that's a very good strategy. We're gonna need to spread the party up, apart, and we're really gonna need people to have ranged weapons. Unfortunately, now noticing Kagan just doesn't have one. And we don't have a spare one to give him. Kagan may need to be kind of the... How to put it? The squirrel that runs around and gets everyone's attention. 
So we're going to pull him forward. We're going to wait for this blessed spell to come off. Okay. And everyone else is swapping to their ranged weapons. Hello. I think we can do this. Okay, so what we're preparing for is the Skull Trap spell, which is a spell that deals considerable amounts of damage early on in the game. Now, we're level 3 and 4, so we do probably have the HP to tank it, which is kind of surprising. But, overall, we want to minimize the number of party members this thing hits. So we're going to spread everyone out so that when the Skull Trap spell flies at us, hopefully it only hits one person. Now, we could initiate dialogue with these people, but that would be silly. So let's just go ahead and instead attempt to outright murder them. Wait, let's take a quick look at our potions. Do we have any potions that would help us? Potion of Clarity. Prevents Feeble Mind Confusion, Fear, and Charm. Well, maybe. It's going to be a lot of spells coming from this, these guys. Perhaps we should use that. Uh, feeble Mind and Charm. It's the Feeble Mind and Fear. Well... No, because we're not fighting wizards, and only wizards get horror. So it's mostly the feeble mind confusion and charm. Although I don't think these guys cast charm either. They cast whole person if they're clerics. It's a little frustrating. Any other potions that might be of use here? We have a potion of absorption. That would help with the lightning damage from the... Oh, yeah, here it is. Potion of absorption. Armor class plus 10 versus crushing attacks and electrical resistance of 1,000. Maybe Kagan should drink that. If he's going to be our guy who runs around and tries to get their attention. Alright, let's do that. We'll pass this <laughs> off to Kagan. Probably tastes terrible. He'll go ahead and drink that. Perfect. Okay, now hopefully they focus him. Let's have Edwin use this scroll. And now the reason we're using a scroll is because he's only a level 3 wizard. His magic missile spell, I believe, only has two missiles, right? Let's see here real quick. First level, every two levels of experience, the ga wizard gains an additional missile. Yeah. So he's he's firing off two missiles from Magic Missile. However, the scroll will actually fire three. Hello? Branwyn, Chaos of Battle maybe should be a thing we do. I'm not sure. What was Chaos of Battle again? Spell lasts only one turn? Forget that. Holy Power. Yeah, actually, we should probably have had her use Holy Power. Although, if she's attacking from a range, extra strength won't help her, so let's ignore that. Yeah, I guess I guess we just let Edwin kind of open this up. We'll have everyone also in the background use ranged attacks here while we kind of push Kagan up a little bit. There we go. Okay, immediately hostile, that's fine. So we're going to pull everyone back here. We'll go there, 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 and there. And now Kagan will stand in the middle and fall back just a little bit. Okay, there we go. I don't know how to do Amazon voices, so here goes something terrible. You there. Your name is Luther of Gladstone. Hurry up and answer. Your answer better be the truth, for your life depends on it. Lighten up, girl. We're not going to tell you our name, so why don't you and your little Amazons wander back to wherever it is you came from? You insolent pigs. You know not who you speak to. Your arrogance will cost you your lives. Alright, well, now's the time we need to actually fight, so Horror Spell can go down. Chartil can focus on Man Maniera, or whoever that is, from a distance. Again, we're fighting from a distance so that we can get a few attacks in, but keep the party spread out. Uh, Kagan will go ahead and just charge right in, though. That's fine. His armor class is low, low compared to Luther's. Do we have anything that can help him with that? Oh, oh, a potion of defense. This will lower his AC down to zero, which is significantly better than three. That's a 15% difference in, well, generally speaking, in uh, likelihood of him being hit. Branwyn will use Hold Person. Let's cast it on these two in the back. All right, let's see how this fares. We're going to need to wait for Kagan to drink that potion. Looks like he has, I think. 
Yes, Kagan has drunk the potion. Now he can go ahead and move forward. His AC is somewhat comparable to Luther's. Unfortunately, he does get hit here. Edwin should have that horror spell up and running pretty soon. Chartiel continues to lower, or rather, fire arrows. And Branwyn is managing her hold person spell. There's a lot of damage on Kagan. That's very unfortunate. Where's this damage coming from? Missile damage. Critical hit. Can't argue with 20. That's too bad. Kagan might die. We'll have to hopefully just have him drink a potion to heal, maybe? We'll pull him back a little bit, get him out of the range of this guy. And we saw there, it, 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 if you blinked, you missed it. See that little red, red graphic? Oh, now they call it a glyph of warding. I thought it used to be called skull trap. Anyway, so that, that glyph of warding was the lightning damage. Now we see here, what happened here? Telka got hit by it. Which one's Telka? Is that this one? No, apparently a save versus spell. Wait, where's the save versus spell coming from? Oh, the save versus spell is coming from the hold person spell. And Kagan actually save versus spell anyway, so he didn't even take damage from the lightning spell. Or the um, glyph of warding, as it is now called. Okay, he drank the health potion, funnily enough. The character that we did not give the potion of absorption to gets nailed by the Glyph of Warding, taking 24 plus 8 damage. That is a lot of damage. What is that? 32? Wait, no, that doesn't make sense. So it must just be 24. Uh, but yeah, 24 damage, nothing to sneeze at. I think Branwyn's gonna have to fall back. We can't afford to let her get hit like that again. Unfortunately, she was too close to Kage. Now, Kage is still taking a lot of damage here. Both these characters are either held and or terrified with only Telka remaining. Telka's firing arrows of fire. We should probably attempt after running backwards a few uh, for, for just a moment, attempt to have Edwin cast another horrify spell. We need to disable Telka somehow. Fortunately our two status effect mages, Branwyn and uh, or no, sorry. Branwyn, one of our status effect mages, is low on HP, which is not... Ah, yeah, and there goes Kagan. Alright, Luther's gonna run up front now. He's got a shield at least, or at least he does when he has his sword out. Telka is at least separated from the rest of the party. If we engage her in melee combat, that will force her to swap over to her melee weapon. And at this point, it's a fairly trivial matter of taking him around. She doesn't have a lot of HP, it's just those arrows are deadly. And yes, both Zila and Lamala here are frozen and horrified. And it's just a simple matter of taking them out. It's really tragic that Kagen died. Like, really tragic. We were on the cusp of keeping him alive. And it just, it just wasn't meant to be. Probably what we should have done is had Luther fall back, or sorry, Luther move forward while Kagane moves backwards. That might have been enough to get the NPCs to focus on Luther instead of Kagane, but oh well. Anyway, again, if we hadn't managed to hold both of these, the, the two spellcasters, this fight would have been that much harder. Um, certainly this is a difficult fight if you're not prepared for it and can easily overwhelm new players to the game. However, now we're tasked with the arduous necessity of divvying up not only the loot of the Amazons we just killed, but also finding a way to carry everything Kagane had back to camp. Is that plate mail are we going to finally get plate mail armor oh my goodness guys it's happening plate mail well okay it's pretty good right like negative one we're gonna go from negative one to negative two a whole one point i don't know why though it feels like plate mail is just such an upgrade it's like plate mail it's full metal it's got to be better right anyway we'll go ahead and give chartiel the Splint mail. Why? Luther still has a full inventory. Save and will not go lightly. Oh, is that everything? Feels like there should have been more. Perhaps there isn't. Oh, here we go. You get a fancy helmet. Again, you disturb me. 
along with uh, more scrolls, and then of course all of Kagan's Thank junk. <laughs> This is a okay. Now, didn't we have a scroll case? We do not. I don't don't really know why we don't have a scroll case, but we don't. Oh, we finally got the sleep spell. We are going to quick save because sleep is a very good spell. And naturally, of course, we fail it. I will just go ahead and load the quick save and uh, give that right an attempt again. Perfect. These other spells we don't care as much about. Okay, fancy helmet goes to Luther, I guess. It doesn't actually do anything different, it just looks different. We need to start consolidating some of our gear here. Branwyn has an open inventory. Go ahead and have her pick up a lot of this. Uh, unfortunately, she does not have the strength to carry it. Now, we could use her uh, holy power holy power to raise her strength enough to just carry this stuff around which is one option we have however it still doesn't change the fact that we need to at least make sure that we have the uh, split mail for Kagein when he comes back to us otherwise I think that's it All right, Edwin is encumbered we'll throw this over to Branwyn Branwyn will toss Edwin some stones. Branwyn will drop holy power. There we are, no longer encumbered. Perfect. And we'll do that as many times as we need. Oh, longbow. Kagen can use that. We'll just hand more uh, lightweight stuff to Edwin and Chartiel. Wow, we are really low on inventory. We don't really need those arrows. Uh, yeah, anyway, we'll go ahead and grab the composite bow for Kagen. I don't think he's proficient in them, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. Alright, and back to Nashkel to claim our reward as the heroes of... Wait. What? Guys, we spawned into this map and Rasad just immediately took damage. That's hilarious. Was that from... Was that from the magic missiles? That's bonkers. Alright. Branwyn again. Encumbered. We're gonna have to ha sleep Save within the city thing. limits? Are we gonna be allowed to do that? Nope. Woken up by an Omnian soldier. We might have to do something silly like leave Branwyn here while we take Luther over and res Kagane. And then walk Luther back with Kagein to get his stuff. I think that's exactly what we're going to have to do. And so we have another strength spell. I'm not seeing one. Oh, Luther, why do you move so slow? I wonder if Rasad will be hostile to us. Hey, we saved the town, Ublek. Did we get a reward? Best you state your business and go. Uh, well, this guy is only here for bounties, so unfortunately we can't claim a reward from him for having saved Nashkel from the kobolds in the mine. Uh, what do you do here, exactly? I have neither the time nor the will to deal with you today. Who can resist yeah, yeah, Ublek. Keep that 300 gold smile, though. Stand away, citizen. You have returned! It would seem I was right to trust you. The town thanks you wholeheartedly. It's pleased to give you a proper reward. Please take this 900 gold for your efforts. It is a small fortune by anyone's standards. Thank you again. Uh, I also found this vial of liquid on one of the kobolds in the mines. I think it may have something to do with the iron. Hmm. I'm no master of metals, but you might want to show that to Thunderhammer up in Baragost. He might know a little more. Again, thank you for all you've done. Uh, okay, Branwyn, calm down there. Branwyn is happy because our reputation raised a whole single point from four to five. I'm pretty sure. Come on, where's a rep? Probably scrolled past it ten times. Oh, well, from five to six. What do you know? We can do a whole nother evil thing. What? Chartiel, calm down. Lady. Come on. We 
Our rep is six. How are you not happy with this? Apparently, Chartil just does not like making people happy when they give us... Come, we got 900 gold, Chartil. Calm down. And we'll not anyway, we'll continue on into the temple to res our poor, poor lost dwarf. You must gather your oh, come on! What do you mean we have to gather the party? What? Uh, all right, well, fine. Just, just dump all this on the floor. We don't need it anyway. It's not like this is rare stuff. There. We'll make Kagen go get his stuff. Sheesh. Of course the temple would be its own loading zone. Of course. Come on, guys. 10-4. Hop to it. Admittedly, I don't think I would mind if they increased the game speed just a little bit. They sure are walking. Okay. Luther did gain a level in all of this, which is nice. We'll go ahead and give that to him. Another point in Bastard Sword? Come on, another point? No, no points were given. Well, more HP is more HP. 56 is not a small number. Save your thanks. And will not go lightly. Thank God. And will not go lightly. Hey, this is a trusting fellow. Hi, Nalin. I don't want to hear any of your jokes. I know we are always having dead party members that you need to resurrect for us. 400 gold down the tube, but what can you do? All right, Kagan, go get your stuff. In fact, you know what? We have nothing left. Nothing left to do in this town anyway. Let's just get out of here. We'll go where the real, where the real parties are. A.K.A. Baragost. That place is like a nightclub, 24/7. Oh, this is not the place I thought it was. Where's the store? Oh, the store's up there. And will not go. Yeah, forget, forget the Nashkel store. These Nashkelians. We'll just go straight to Feldpost. Oh, funnily enough, Kagan is going to heal a lot of the HP damage he has taken. In fact, we transition from one screen to the next. And several hours pass, he should just like heal right up. I need an owl. Go I need an owl. Okay. Previous gear reacquired. Although Kargain's shield is still something to be desired. Thank God. And will not go. <sighs> That's fine. We'll go to Baragos. We got that tip we'll off that Transig was staying at Baragos. So maybe we'll go have a word with him. Stay thy course a moment to indulge in old man. Well now, our path cross once more. I suppose proper introductions are in order, as we will no doubt meet again. My name is Elminster. I've heard nothing but tales of thy exploits in the time we have been apart. It would seem that thou art destined to have quite the impact on the Sword Coast. Quite the burden for one so young. You know nothing of my burdens, old man. Perhaps, perhaps not. But I've seen much in my many years. I would agree, however, that I have not often seen the like of thee. Still, Gorion had faith in thee, and therefore I have no question as to thy competency. All that remains is to determine a motive. My motives? My motives are my own, no one else's. I am unsure, however, whether the distasteful road thou hast chosen is the result of a sadistic humor, or just the path of least resistance. If thou must indulge thy predatory instincts, at least be sure that they do not take total control. This would be especially dangerous for thee. I will impart one piece of information before I go, though tis hardly a surprise, I am sure. The bandits that thou dost seek make a habit of traveling in the northeast. With this, I shall take my leave. Cram it, old man! Alright, let's go. You know what? We don't need to talk to Thunderhammer about these uh, vials, but... We are interested in perhaps him making some anchor armor for us, so we're going to give him a quick talk. Ah, an interesting piece of material you, you got there. Anchor, if I'm not mistaken. Been a while since I've seen the like, but if I remember correctly, it makes a fine set of armor. 
If properly treated, it'll be comparable to full plate mail without the weight, with half the weight. If you're willing to part with your shells, I'll give you a 500 gold for the lot of them. No more can I offer with this business as slow as it is. Iron shortage hurting us and all. <clears throat> Alright, so we want the option here that lets us actually buy the Ankeg armor for him. From him. We'll say, I'm not interested in selling it now, though it would be to you if I do. A shame it is. It could bring quite, bring quite a bit once finished. How about this? For 4,000 gold, I'll make it into plate for you instead. It's half my normal rate for working on an exotic, but as I mentioned, business is slow. Though your offer is generous, it is more than I can afford right now. If it be gold you're short of, why not make... Why not try for the bounty on the cleric Basilis? I heard it already nears 5,000, so you could never... You would have changed to spare. Be quick about it, though. That shell will rot in a ten day if not cured. Oh, crap. It will? Well, nice. Uh, well, we do want that armor. I didn't realize it would rot. Let's go ahead and see if we can sell things to this guy. Maybe we can make a bit of profit enough that we have the 4,000 gold that he's asking for. All right, guys, pony up. What are we selling? Wait, Thunderhammer will buy gems, but not jewelry. How interesting. All right, I guess that means we need to go to Feld Posts. But going to Feld Posts necessitate, necessitates that we encounter transit. But, well, what are we going to do? Luther of Gladstone! Luther of Gladstone! Somebody in the Jovial Juggler gave me a gold piece to come find you! Uh... How do you know my name, child? Why, everyone here is talking about you! You're the ones that saved the Nashko Mines! My mama says that even though we don't like those folks from Arm, there's no reason anyone should have to suffer so. We don't have, like, any evil responses here. This is all being all far too cordial to Chloe. I uh, suppose you're right, little one. Now this person who sent you, they're in the Jovial Juggler. Could you tell me where that is? The Jovial Juggler Inn and Fest Hall. It's in the southeast part of town. Just look for a sign out front with the jester on it. Very well. I shall uh, seek out the sign with the jester on it and meet your friend within. Good. You folks are real nice. Mama says the Sword Coast needs more heroes. Uh, Timora will be with you, okay? Thank God. Who can resist the yeah, that felt awkward Luther. all around. I felt like we just needed a line that told the child to, like, piss off. <laughs> Obviously, I would never do that to a real child, but it's definitely what, you know, our antagonistic party would do. Or a way to dupe the child or something like that. Oh, boy. Well, at least there's no moral in the uh, inn to cause problems when we enter. The party is beginning to claim, uh, complain about being fatigued, so we will need to uh, address that. Go lightly. You want some whiskey? All right. Well, Feldpost Inn, other inn, otherwise known as the place that buys everything. Well, we'll sell our gems and jewelry. Surely, surely we'll get up to well, close to four thousand. Maybe, maybe not. It's actually looking worse and worse the more we go through everyone's inventory. Nope, not at four thousand. Doggone it! How are we gonna get this gold? I feel like we constantly run into this problem as the evil party. All right, guys, time to time to go full on loot mode. Let's see what treasures we can find fell posts in. Really? Oh crap! That's Transig. We don't want to talk with him yet. <laughs> I wonder. Do you think Transig would care if we like stole right in front of him? I'm not gonna test that theory. Well, no one in here. We have to take off our armor, but that's fine. Oh, it's not even locked. No, there's also nothing in it. If only we could identify things! 
We don't want to steal right in front of this traveler. That seems like a bad idea. Algernon up here with Algernon's cloak. Fun fact, it was the most broken item in the original Boulder's Gate. Allowed you to cast Charm Person on anything. And it had infinite I'll uses. It. it was kind of hilarious. Fortunately, Feldpost Inn does not seem like a good place to okay. hit for money. Perhaps we will check some of these other houses. Oh, of course. Locked. Well, we'll just fix that. Really? I feel like this is the first time we've really gotten to do some looting. Some good old-fashioned looting. Well, there we go. That's a start. Really? Let's see what else we have around here. Yeah. Oh. What a shame it is that uh, no one is home during the midday to guard their precious valuables. You know, we picked up a dagger. We don't need that. We'll just drop that up in there. <laughs> the The people who own this home are going to be very confused when they discover that all of their gold and valuables are gone, but the dagger they kept in the chest downstairs mysteriously moved to the upstairs cabinet. Bah, another locked door. Come on, Chartiel, get in there. Oh, another empty house. How fantastic. Oh, a lot of gems. I should probably stop saying oh. I need to find another exclamatory. Huzzah! Oh, well, there's nothing even in that chest. Fine, fine. Nothing here either. But the fire is lit and it's all cozy for when they come back home. What are we up to? Well, 3,300 plus a bunch of gems. That's something. Is this fire be Devlin Hare's house? No. This is another... Oh, gosh darn it. Looks like the family is home. Well, we'll just have a stroll upstairs. They don't seem to mind that we're in here. Come on! Why is there a kid here? A sleeping person. I don't think we can steal. Maybe we can steal? Do people who... Are people who is who are asleep, do they count as seeing you steal? I don't actually do know. It. Fortunately, we're not really in a prime position to steal from that home, so we'll have to leave it alone. Ah, yes. Here is uh, oh. Beadfire Elven Hair, Hair Elven's house. Ah, next time you pass through Candlekeep, you should read the history of the Bell in the Depths. It is an old favorite of mine that I'm sure you would like. Yeah, sure. Whatever, old man. Okay. What the? Apparently, Firebead Elven here either has a wife or is getting busy. Anyway, I'm assuming that's Firebead's, or I guess it could be his daughter or something. Anyway, I think the, the real point is that I wanted to make is I was surprised that Firebead even had any family or anyone in his house at the same time. He must, I assume he's married or something. Anyway, we were able to at least get a jade stone ring out of the deal. I'll do it. Mm, too many people here. Maybe the upstairs is better. Really? We did tests to see whether or not sleeping people counted and they did not in the last house. So I think we're free to just kind of look around here. Okay, eight gold, not great. Some book that we don't care about. And a sleeping dwarf? Alright. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's a slow process. We're up to Well, we got about fifty okay. more gold after all that. Ugh. Stupid commoner down here. If we're lucky okay, see this right here, we can actually still access the chest and it won't trigger the guards because we're out of her vision. Okay. No one upstairs, fantastic for us. And a locked chest. More gold, more gold. <laughs> uh, Tarim of the Thunderhammer Smithy is going to just be like, oh. I see you got the thousand gold you were missing. We're gonna be like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we earned it from you know doing what you said. We went out and found uh, 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 Sabalus or uh, Basilus or we, you know that that guy. 
It's not going to be suspicious at all that we come to him laden with the riches of the people of Bergost. He's going to have all this money given to him and then he's going to go outside and all the commoners are going to be like, We were robbed blind! Really? I'm sure he won't put two and two together. Looks like we can't even go into that house. You know, earlier, Chartil, you were complaining that the party was terrible under the male leadership. Pick one. Really? All right. Nothing good here. So, in the earliest days of my excursions in Baldur's Gate, I used this house as a drop-off house. I had this chest over here laden, absolutely laden, with every single magical gear, potion, item, sword, everything I could find. Because for some silly reason, I refused to sell any of it. Because I kept thinking, what if I need it later? What if, what if I run into a monster that's weak to something, or I need a certain kind of weapon, or and so on and so forth. Unfortunately... In spite of being able to check those treasure chests, there was nothing useful, or at least nothing easily liquidatable into money in okay. them. Ooh, how nice of you to stay in the other room, my friend. Whilst your valuables lie in the room beside you. And apparently we need to drop more arrows. Slowly. Slowly we're getting there. We're up to 3,400, plus a bunch of gems. I'll do it. This was something that you couldn't do so much of in Baldur's Gate 2. I don't know if that's better or for worse. Baldur's Gate 2 was a lot more focused on being streamlined, more focused on doing quests, uh, kind of having a more normal, I would say, game, a much less free roam game. I mean, it was free free roam in the sense that you could do non-linear quests, but it was very much more a go to a place, get a quest, go to another place, finish quest, instead of sort of the open worldedness that is Baldur's Gate 1. And there was a lot less availability to just kind of go into random people's houses like this and steal things. But since morality is completely hinged on your reputation and not the actual choices that you made, it does make sense to remove that as kind of a feature, simply because a party who claims to be lawful good and has a reputation of 20 can go around the entire town and steal everything, because as long as they don't get caught, it will never actually count against them. The game will still treat them as if they're the lauded heroes of the realm and how they're doing all these wonderful things when in reality they've robbed entire towns blind. We're going to go back to Fell Post and cash some of this gold in or some of these treasures in, partially to clear up inventory space, par or sh okay. partially also to get a better idea of where we stand as far as our gold count. Who has good charisma here? None of these people have good charisma. Branwyn's as high as we got, so we'll go ahead and put her up at the top. And uh, we'll just go ahead and sell all these convenient resources that we totally found while we were out adventuring in the Nashkel mines. Anyone who suggests otherwise is clearly just silly. Now, these do not sell for as much as I was hoping for. We're up to 3,500. We could sell the Potion of Agility. Raises Dex to 18 for three hours. That would be very, very useful for Kagan, but once we get those gauntlets identified, it will be a pointless potion. Uh, we don't really need it for Sharkeel, and the back row fighter should never be in the front anyway. And for some crazy reason, Branwyn has... Resident Governor of Laria, Bitnor, and Feldusham. <laughs> what did Luther just say? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Is that his, is that his leadership line? As leader, I plan to make us stinking rich. Ha! Does this make me Supreme Commander of the Tiberium Forces, Resident Governor of Laria, Bitnor, and Feldusham? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a reference that Luther makes in Lines of Lore 2 that itself is a reference to, um... The Command and Conquer series, also released by Westwood. Okay. 
now let's get back on track to what we were doing, which is trying to get a count for our... Oh, right, right, right. We were comparing whether or not a potion of dexterity was actually useful in this party. I mean, Edwin would get four AC from it, but Edwin should never be, be, be being targeted anyway. Now, I think we can safely sell the potion to Dex. It's fine. Don't be creepy, innkeeper. We can still sell it for 150, so that's fine. The nice thing is, the 4,000 gold that Thunderhammer wants to sell the Ankeg armor to us is unaffected by our reputation. Uh, since our reputation is so low, we're actually incurring probably a pretty hefty penalty here. When we try to buy things and sell things but because the ankeg armor is part of a dialogue and not the actual store interface it does not cost us anything more anything more okay let's go ahead and sleep since charteel is tired i don't know if that actually affects her dice rolls when it comes to picking chests not that we've had any trouble picking any of the locks yet Knock on wood. I don't know if we're going to be able to get up to the... Well, we're pretty close. 3,600 on the higher end of 3,600. We probably can get 4,000 here in Bergos. Oh, and here's Kagan's house. I'll do it. Or should I say shop? No need to go back in there. Really? F7 is... No, what is this? F5, let's just hotkey this. Not needed. Bah! Poor peasants. How can we steal lots of money if everyone else doesn't earn it for us first? I'll do it. In the northeast, there is the okay. what is it? Entar Silver Shields Manor? You'd have to be an idiot to try to knock that place off, though, right? Right? Maybe we should go steal from Endhar Silver Shield. He is in the northeast of Bergost, right? Okay. I think. Or is he just strictly re uh, restricted to being in Baldur's Gate itself? At the city, not the game. More books. No one cares about books. History of the North. More like... History of the boar, boar for boring. Yeah, nailed it. Really? Really? Hey, look at this guy. This is this fancy four-story home. Really? But strangely, when we go inside, it'll only be two stories. Oh well. Okay. Little kids staying up late in the bottom floor is going to prevent us from stealing anything. Frustrating. Gosh! Why don't you peasants have more gold? Come on, I'll kid. Can't you, like, walk somewhere or... I don't know. Stand anywhere but there? Mother said not to talk with strangers. Duh! You scared me. I wasn't ta taking anything. Honest. I was just checking out the house. That's all. Someone's got to watch over the place, because... I'm sure they will come back. The Grey Carts only went to Baldur's Gate to visit, and they should be back already. I'm gonna wait right here till they do. Ugh, kid. Could you wait anywhere else? We're here to steal as well. We could split the gold 50 50, but no! Game would actually treat the child as an active person aware of our theft. Yeah? No. Oh. You startled me. I'm not used to strangers because traveling is so dangerous now. Please don't linger too long here. The children are leery of anyone they don't know, and it's hard enough keeping them calm when there's just me around. If only my husband hadn't gone to work in the mines at Nashkel. Oh, super sad. Would be even sadder if you went into that other room so we could rob you blind. Oh my goodness, she acquiesced. Oh, nope. We're still in vision. Come on, just, just, just stay. No! Alright, so maybe we can steal from here, but there's nothing in there. And if she takes a step down, just go down. Go down. Go down, lady. Come on. No! Well, whatever. We'll never know what's in that other chest. I'll do it. Anything in this sack? 
We're getting desperate here. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, six gold. Okay. It's about as much as any peasant had. Oh, <laughs> that door was open from when we did that mass do door check when we were looking for Kagan. Okay. Sleeping dude. Yeah, not too bad. Some gold and a healing potion. Nothing, and probably nothing. Yeah. Really? Uh, of course, the commoner would be on the bottom floor, preventing us from looting that floor. I feel like the houses are getting bigger, though, the farther up we go. Really? And a little fancier. Okay, take that back. A lot fancier. Two locked chests. Tempting, tempting. Nice, nice. We like what we see. Potion of insight. The heck is a potion of insight? How very insightful. Gives us wisdom of 18. That seems unnecessary. When would you ever momentarily need a wisdom of 18? When you're a wizard with very low wisdom. <laughs> three and you cast wish that's when you would need a potion of insight we're not going to be casting wish in this in a uh, boulders gate one though so we don't need to worry about it which means we could probably just sell it so we sell the potion of agility the potion of insight okay at that point we probably have all the gold we need right Probably. But it's been so addicting to steal from everyone. It's so empowering to get things that we didn't work for for free. Chesney does not endorse any of the messages found in any of his Let's Plays. <laughs> the reviews and commentary found within this do not... <laughs> uh... Okay, let's just confirm at least whether or not Endhar Silver Silver Shield actually lives up here. And then I think we probably have enough gold. Look at this. You know his house is fancy because he has two doors. Not one, but two. You know, I'm genuine, genuinely convinced that because this guy is so rich, the garbage in the back of his house surely has money in it. No, just a girdle. What are we going to do with just a girdle? It's just a girdle. That, that doesn't do anything. All right, there you go, Sharteel. Have your free two-pound encumbrance that accomplishes nothing. Arrows. Okay, not useful. And, uh, yep, there it is. 25 gold. Just out in a chest. Looks like the gardener, sorry, farmer, didn't even notice take it. Take Notice us take it. I can grammar good. He has two doors, but only one of them open. What? You can't lock us out. Come on. Oh boy. Uh, those guys look like guards. I'm gonna leave. Okay. Okay, back to Feldposts. Feldpost is probably very, very tired of us soliciting Go by the four. <laughs> Of these guys just standing around the bar forever. They won't even buy any drinks. They just rent a room every now and then. But hey, their friend keeps coming back and inconspicuously giving them more and more treasure that they totally got legitimately when they raided the Nashkel Mines Cobalt Lairs. Alright, we'll scoop Brandwin up to the top again. Although I don't even know if it's really making a difference anymore. Our rep is so low. Ha! <sighs> Alright, Potion of Insight. Yeah, we can sell that. Fire Agate. Agate. Where's that Potion of Dexterity? Did we already sell that? We can check real quick. Ah, gosh darn it. We already sold it. I thought we still had it. Why do we have this extra splint mail? Do we need that? Splint mail, splint mail, no mail. Oh, it's not extra. It's just chart heals. <sighs> okay. 
What's this fancy helmet that Kagen is wearing? Oh. It's apparently unidentified. I broke the rules! Oh no. Oh, and Kage and can't. Oh, this isn't Kage and Hold on. You have a bow! We don't really want to give Kage in the potion of stone form, although we probably want to give him these potions of defense. That seems like a good thing to give him. It very nearly might have made the difference in that fight against the Amazons if he hadn't got hit so hard. <sighs> Alright guys, we're gonna make a decision. I think we could probably part with some of these scrolls. Yeah, we don't really need grease or color spray or armor. Wait, why do we have two armors? Weird. Yep, we're at 4,000. Finally! We did it! Congratulations, my friends. We have succeeded in robbing the entirety... The entirety of Bergos blind. And we now have the proper funds through which to pro procure an Ankeg plate mail. Ankeg plate tends to be at nearly the highest tier of the game. I think, is there a full plate mail plus one? But Ankeg functions as if it were full plate mail plus one. Yeah, Ankeg might be the game's best armor. I'm hard pressed to remember an armor that's better. If Tempus wills it. I can make Okay, so same dialogue choices as before. We'll go ahead and um tell him a fair price for the workmanship of Terran Thunderhammer. Four hundred gold it is. Good on you. Now it will take me a while to finish, but you will have the finest armor in Bergost, if not the entire sword coast. Come back in three days, and I'll give it, and I'll have it ready for you. Very well. I shall return in a few days. We lost our shell and our gold, but it's so gonna be worth it. Once we do acquire the Ankeg armor, I will allow us to go pick up the free Ankeg armor that's found in the Nashgal farms. I just felt like it was far too good of an armor to have early on. That it would make uh, the early episodes just kind of uninteresting. Wow! Apparently we spent way longer looting Bergos than I even realized. That is where we're going to call it for today, my friends. In the next episode, we'll find a way to fritter away three days while we wait for Terum to finish the Ankeg plate. And then truly, we will have a near-invincible Luther. Until then, thank you for watching. And as, al as always, take care of yourselves out there. Try to have a bit of fun in the meantime. And I'll see you in the next one.